Hey, what's going on my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you a weekly energy reading for the week of October 19th through the 25th. Good times ahead. It's a fantastic week for a lot of different things and I'm going to break it down as I always do into three more specific themes. And then towards the end, I'll give you a tip of the week, a little piece of advice that can help you get the most out of this powerful, this powerful time we're living in. Pretty much every week, we are alive on planet Earth is, is abundant with opportunity for, for almost an unprecedented level of spiritual growth, life enhancement, self-discovery, personal development, and it all has its own unique kind of theme and flavor, hence these energy updates. And this is my, my way to do the best I can to help you all, again, get the most out of this. What this is going to be, in, in particular, a really good week. Theme number one is the time to rebel. It's the time to be bold. It's the time to allow your uniqueness to come through, even if it scares you, even if you know people might re react to it. People might not like it. People might not be used to it. You might not be used to it. The spiritual awakening process is one of self-discovery. It's a stripping away, an unraveling of all that is not you, so that what can be left and all that is left is the true you. But the problem is the true you sometimes it's not who you would have expected. It's not who your mom and dad want you to be. It's not what your friends and family are used to you being. So all of a sudden there's this part of you that, that starts to kind of, you become aware of it. And it kind of has this like sense like it wants to express itself. Maybe practically speaking, you might find yourself compelled to do different things. Maybe you want to have a career change. Or maybe you have an idea that you feel strongly about, but you look out there in the world and no one's done it before. And you think this, this might not work because no one's done it before. And, and you're doubting yourself and you're questioning yourself. Also, the real you, it's, it's difficult to explain. And that can also be scary. There's a, there's a lot of unknown around who you may be finding yourself to be. Like uh, in terms of your identity, like back in the day, I was I could have listed off for you all the different like I could have described myself in a way that felt complete to me. My name is Victor Roto. I'm a happily married man. I have three lovely children, and I'm a I'm a personal trainer. There it is. That that's pretty much who I was, but. When like the real you starts to come up, it's like nothing fits. It's like, yeah, I'm all those things, but also because of this other aspect of me, it doesn't, it's not a complete, it's not a complete label. So you might find it to where like you don't, the, the mind has a difficult time sort of feeling safe when it can't explain everything. And what, especially when, it, when you can't explain yourself. I don't know what I am exactly. I had this feeling, I had this sense, I feel this creative energy wanting to direct me somewhere, but I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know where it's gonna end up, and I don't even know how to explain it to people, but I know it's there. Now is the time to do your best to just to, to be that, to not hold back out of fear of the unknown, out of fear of what people are gonna think, or even your own period of time you may have to go through as you warm up to the, the reality of who you really are. And who we really are, we're these dynamic, expansive, fluid, ever-changing forces, sparks of creation. And we are living in a time when that has been heavily, heavily suppressed in people. So it's so unfamiliar, the fullness of what we are. But... If not you, then who's going to do it? What we need right now, the reason, in my opinion, why things are all messed up is because people are not being themselves. People don't even know who they are. And now you're starting to discover who you are. And it's very important that you roll with it, that you allow yourself to blossom into who you are. Because you have no idea how many people you might be able to affect and uplift and help merely by your example of being really free and authentic. It's refreshing, people crave it, and they don't even know what they're looking for. 
but what's coming up and being born within you is that. It, it's, it's, this, it's like this realness that the world is uh, in desperate need of right now. And just to give you an example of my own life, you know, I was a fitness trainer, as I mentioned, and I helped a lot of people. You know, I had like maybe 30 or 40, 50 clients that would come to like my gym and, and we, were, we were making a difference. Me and my team were making a difference in the world. And all of a sudden, I felt this calling to, to get on YouTube and to, you know, shift gears and make these energy updates. That was a stretch for, for me quite a bit. And um, I was afraid of it. But what if I didn't do that? What if I just stayed where I was familiar with, stayed where it felt normal and secure and safe? You know, this channel, not to boast, but it has over 300,000 followers. I've had millions upon millions upon millions of views on my channel. There's hundreds of thousands of people have benefited from me following this sort of crazy path that when it happened to me, I didn't know where it was leading. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. So same thing for you. Now you might not become this YouTuber, but there's no way to know just how many people you will deprive of your true essence if you just stay, you know, keep it closed in. So the, 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 the tip and the theme is to rebel, to let your freak flag fly. You might be surprised at how people respond to it because even if, it, even if it's something people don't agree with, there's something to be respected by someone really being themselves. Number two, it's a time to relax. It's a time to look around at all the blessings you have. Happiness, contentment, joy, peace, safety, all these things, a lot of times it's a matter of waking up and, and, and smelling the roses basically. I was reading this book yesterday morning called, uh, called True Love by Thich Nhat Hanh. He's a real awesome spiritual teacher. One of the few that at least seem to have reached you know, the, 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 uh, the enlightened state. So his words have such a beautiful potency to them and, uh, and also a loving softness. Anyway, in this book he was describing, he was describing a blind person. And he was asking, he was talking about like being rich. He said, what do you think a blind person would value out of anything in existence? And of course, it's to see again. Imagine if you were blind and then you all of a sudden could open your eyes to the different forms, as he put it, the, the richness. I'm looking out at, there's trees and the sun is just coming up over the horizon and shining down and these leaves are kind of glistening with light. And there's a pool, there's all this beauty, there's all this, these colors, there's beauty. It's, it's amazing just to be able to see. But Thich Nhat Hanh says, if you don't like remind yourself of that, he calls it mindfulness. If you don't become aware of like the, the unspeakable blessings you have, then you don't really experience it. Most of us, me too, we take our sight for granted. I take the fact that I have warm clothes on for granted. I have shelter over my head. I have a phone over there. I can go look up anything. There's any question that pops in my head. I just can know it. I have you, these beautiful people that, that watch my channel, that give me a, a purpose. And, and it, anyway, the point is the abundance and, and feeling good and rel it's, it's all there in the moment. So now is a good time and better put to, to cultivate this energy of mindfulness, because that's where the happiness will come. It's not from getting more. We've been conditioned to just want and want and want and think we'll be happy. We, 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 a lot of people, and myself included for a long time, and still sort of assume that when I get over here, then I'll be happy, then I'll be grateful, then I'll be content, then I won't feel uh, anxious, etc. It's when I get this or get to this place in my life. But you can get anywhere. You, it doesn't matter what you get. It's, it's, it's to what degree are you present with it? And that's a choice. That's something that for the most people, it takes like a concerted effort to really ground in, to really like take a moment and pause to see all the awesomeness we have in our life right now.
And finally, my friends, number three, it's a time to trust, more specifically, trust the divine unfoldment. I would bet for a lot of you, something's trying to be birthed through you as a conduit, a creative idea, an, uh, an inspiration for a, a book or a business or just a, a direction in life that you don't even know where it's going to lead, but you want to do it. There's this feeling of feeling compelled to do it, but you don't know what it's going to look like. You don't know how it's going to play out. There are no guarantees. You have way fewer details than you would prefer. And this sort of, these really amazing manifestations oftentimes play out that way. We are not given anything in terms of like information and foresight except exactly what you need in every given moment, which is a lot less than most of us would feel comfortable with. It reminds me of uh, these retreats, me and my friend Aaron Dowdy and my wife Patty, we organized these ayahuasca retreats in Costa Rica. And the way it came together like three or four years ago was so random and so, not random, but like very, very synchronistic. It felt like the stars aligned and we just so happened to connect with these phenomenal, high and high, such high integrity shamans. And we've met many different, we've drank many different places and these people were just, they, they were at a new level of like humility and integrity. And, and they were also in their own life looking to kind of branch out. And for them to work with us, these like YouTubers, it was, it was like a stretch for, for both of us basically. And anyway, it just sort of worked out. And then year after year, we've been running these retreats two or three times a year. And they, there's, there's such a magic to them that none of us have really influenced. It's like all of us are playing off this thing. Basically, and anyway, we were sitting down with one of the shamans about a year ago, and he was he was like saying, you know, with a big with a big water like Bombay in his mouth, he was talking, you know, and he was saying like uh, something special is happening right now, and, and we can all feel it. He said there's a path opening for us, and he said we, none of us can see it though, none of us can see where this thing is going. He said, but we you can if you're if you're if you're sensitive. You pay attention, you can smell it. Smells like, no, I'm just kidding. He, he meant is like you can sense it. And so can you. With whatever's coming through for you, you'll be able to kind of have a sense of what to do, even though it's not spelled out for you. Like, do this tomorrow, now this. It, it's not going to ever be like that. And because we're so used to having our minds so dominant in the manifestation process, many people in this sort of new energy with this new way of manifesting, they kind of freeze up and they don't do anything until they get all the information they think they need, but it never comes. So unfortunately, a lot of these beautiful creations never make it past like the seedling stage. They don't blossom into this gorgeous tree or forest because, because people have not been taught how this divine manifestation can work. A lot of the great masters throughout history, they figured it out. Most like the great artists, composers, athletes even, they, they will, they, the way if you hear them talk about it, they talk about it like something else just kind of took them over. They knew how to get out of their own way. And that's kind of what we're being asked to do. But to do that, we have to have some type of trust. Not in the energies, not in Victor, not in whatever. It's like some type of trust though in like a higher force, the creative intelligence of the universe perhaps. There's this book I read a long time ago by, a, what was her name? Um, I think Elizabeth Gilbert called Big Magic. And this was all about the creative process. Really a fantastic book by the way. And she talked about ideas like just an idea, having its own independent consciousness almost, its own, its own like autonomy. And the way she put it was like, you know, all, at any given moment, there are all these different ideas sort of floating around, looking for, for people to like, that they think, <laughs> that they assume can like bring them into reality, basically. But the point is like, it, it's not, that someone did it. It's someone rather was receptive and played off it and sort of gave birth 
to these ideas. And that's kind of what I think is happening to a lot of people right now who have been going through a spiritual awakening because they're becoming more sensitive to these inspiration type of frequencies floating around. And whatever it is, it'll probably come through somebody. And I've had this happen where I've sort of ignore, ignored things like that. And then I see like a year or two later, someone's doing the exact same thing. And it's like, oh, they'll, they'll find an outlet, but you could be that outlet. And you're right now, hopefully, maybe like, uh, you know, pregnant, we'll say, with one of these amazing inspired ideas, so why not give birth to it? And all you gotta do is trust. We don't have to do much. For these retreats we've done, we've done like nine of them now, and every single retreat, we learn a lot. And we know, we learn a lot of how to make it better through contrast, essentially, through, through things going very well, and then problems or complications or just dis disturbances. And then from this sort of energetic feedback, we, we make these changes and it's becoming more and more and more refined, but we have no control over it any more than you have control over your inspired idea. But the cool thing is we don't need to control it. Any, even if we got our way and we're able to control this thing, whatever it is, it's going to limit it. Our minds are very limited. Our spirit is not limited by anything. It is eternal, infinite, can draw upon anything within all of existence at its disposal to use for its own benefit. And all we need to do is pay attention and, smell and keep our noses open of what the next move in every given moment is to make. And if we can do that, I can tell you from my own experience doing stuff like this, like these retreats, for example, they're so, you can't put a word on them. There, there is a magic to them, a divinity, a divine quality. And you can have that too. You probably, maybe you already do have it in your life, but this week's a good week to, to have it again, to, to keep going with the flow and allow these things to come through. And I'm going to share with you now the tip of the week that hopefully will help what I was saying. It'll give you more of a strategy contrary to what I was kind of saying. And the tip of the week is to be on the lookout for the highest resonance. What I mean, and I'm going through this in my own life, as I always am when I make these updates, honestly. I'm going through this, uh, this all of this, basically. There's something trying to come through me, and I don't know what it is exactly, but I'm getting little glimpses of it. For example, I went to Salt Lake City last week, and I... I found myself writing a lot. I wrote like a whole course. I talked about this, about weight loss for empathic people. And it literally just channeled through me so effortlessly. And, but my mind is like, you, you, okay, are you, are you gonna be a writer now? Should this be a book? Should it be a course? What about the videos? Blah, try, trying to like make, make sense of all the different pieces. But, but what I do know is that when I was writing that book, whatever it implies, that was me at like my highest peak state. I do other things. I, I, I do videos and I do, you know, th different things. But for some reason, that was like my best self possible was present during that time. My friend Aaron Dowdy, for example, you may have seen him. He makes YouTube videos. He does live events. He has courses, things like that. What he's finding, and just yet last week, he did a, a live guided meditation on his YouTube channel. And for some reason, for him, that represented, that was him in his highest state. He gets into like a, a peak state, you could say, for, to film a YouTube video. But when it's live, with he had 3,000 people on, and he loves these guided meditations, that was him at even a higher level. Now, what does that mean? He was wondering, should I do them every week, once a month? What do I do? We don't know. He doesn't know, I don't know. But we do know that we experienced a moment where we were at this higher frequency, and that's the clue. So for you, that's like the, that's the, the path to walk, is to like try as best you can to spend more time in what this author, Gay Hendricks, calls your zone of genius, when you're in your flow, when you're at your best, when you're in your peak state, that's a sign. That's like when you're gonna have the best possibility of birthing in like the maximum potential of whatever this, thing is. And a lot of times we just don't know how all the pieces are going to fit and, and what it means for like the balance of, of our life. But we don't have to know if we can just keep on trusting and smelling the path. So with that said, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this update. I'll see you all next time. Have an amazing day.
a fantastic week. Much love.